Hey guys, welcome back to the Book Nook Corner. It is Courtney. Today's video is really cool because I think there's a lot of people that watch my channel that aren't necessarily fantasy readers, which is like, what are you doing? Why not? But that is just because all walks of life and everything like that. I'm just here to say that if you are not a fantasy reader, you need to be because that is where it's at. And fantasy books have my heart. They always will. This is a genre that I let go of completely. I may take breaks from it, like I'm planning on doing for May, but I don't think that I will ever fully like let it go or leave or get tired of it. I am here to help the beginner fantasy readers out there find books that are easy to digest and get into and understand and the magic systems aren't crazy and all of those things. So here we go. The very first book that I'm going to mention is one that had been on my radar for a while. Every time I would pass it on the shelf, I was like, oh, I need to read that book. I just have such a good feeling about it that it's going to be good. And so about a year, year and a half after buying it, I read it and I was so glad that I did. It had me in tears. It gave me chills. I couldn't put it down. It is just so good. It is one of my, honestly, probably my top 10 favorite books of all time. And that would be A River Enchanted. I almost just dropped it by Rebecca Ross. This is the Illumicrate edition, I believe. I don't think. Yep, Illumicrate. Right on the back. I was like, that doesn't make sense. And it's right there on the back. Illumicrate exclusive. I just fell in love with this book. I still have yet to finish the second one. I'm almost there. The characters in this and the way that she weaves everything together. Like that is how I describe her writing is weaving. Weavage. She's just... <laughs> very good. I've literally read every single one of these of this author's books other than this second one. I have yet to finish but other than that I've read all of her books and they're just amazing and I love them. I highly suggest her and she also has a super aesthetic bookstagram as well so follow her on there. I love her bookstagram. It's just like so pleasing to the eye. Hopefully there is a description. For the end papers in this like just take a little gander right if that gives you any clue as to the story so good. Here's the description. I wish looking back now that I would have annotated this and if I ever reread it again I will because there's just so much. She's so rich and how her descriptions and how she like I said weaves words and she's a word weaver. <gasps> how cool is that? I just really suggest this book and I really really would like for you to read it. And if you do, let me know because it's amazing. And it's one that is not really that heavily magical. There is magic in it, but it isn't the crux of the story or it isn't like something that just defines the characters in the book. It's just kind of an added little tiny background bonus. My sister, who is not a fantasy reader whatsoever and never will be, loved this. She really got into it, if that has anything to say. So go check this out. And if you do, if you read it, please let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Please talk to me about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The next book that I'm going to mention is actually one of my more recent favorite authors. Like she honestly is right up there with Rebecca Ross and Sarah J Mass for me. And that would be Carissa Broadbent and The Daughter of No Worlds. So this is the only book in this trilogy that I've read. It's called The Lost, The War of Lost Hearts trilogy. I've only read this one. I own the other two. I just have not taken the time to read them. And I need to because I thoroughly enjoyed this. Here is the description. Oops, my fingers are always somehow in the way. This is one that, there again, it has magic in it, for sure. But it's not overwhelming, at least not to me. I mean, I guess I'm saying that as a fantasy reader. But there's just, like, the character growth, the character development, the relationships. Like, that is what is prevalent and foremost in this book, which is obviously what I enjoy and I think a lot of people enjoy and that's why we read. And so I just suggest this because, you know, even though, like I said, magic is a part of it, it is not all of it. So I just implore you to please check out this author. She also has another series called The Ser Serpent and the Wings of Night. That I would say is definitely more magical in things because of some of the characters in it and what they are. So I would, if you're gonna, if you're gonna delve into Carissa Broadbent, I would start with this book for sure. Next series that I would suggest, I mean, I think you guys know what I'm gonna say. You know you know you know. That would be A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This is a story of a very human girl 
who lands herself in a very non-human world. And you soon find out why, but it is not overwhelmingly non-human, if that makes sense. There's still a lot of human characteristics with these fae and how they do things and how they live their life. And so that's why I think that it's not going to throw someone that doesn't normally read fantasy. It's not going to throw them for too much of a loop. Anyway, I highly suggest this. Here is the description. If you haven't heard of this book, you're psycho. The next series that I'm suggesting is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. So I would say that this is probably even more YA, at least the first couple books, than A Court of Thorns and Roses, or Akatar as we call it in the Akatar world and the Sarah J. Mass world. This is TOG too. So if you ever see someone talking about TOG, it's Throne of Glass. But yes, I highly suggest this as well. This one, I feel so bad sometimes because so many people say, oh my god, the first book is horrible. It's slow. And they don't get good until like the third or fourth book in the series. And so then a lot of people are like, okay, well, why would I invest my time in three or four books before it gets good? I hate that. I'm like, no, stop. Don't say that. Please don't say that. Shut your little mouth. Because that is not how it is at all. I guess if you're looking at it from a purely fantasy perspective, maybe. But even me reading fantasy my entire life did not see it that way. She wrote these, I believe, when she was like teenager, like mid-teenager age. That is very noticeable, but not in a bad way at all. I love this story. I love the characters. I love how mystery is interwoven into this story. It keeps you guessing until the end. And I think that honestly, anyone, like I want my mother to read this so bad. And she is the type of person who reads James Patterson, CJ Box, things like that. That's kind of what she, the realm that she sticks in. I want her to read this because I think that she would genuinely like it. And the audiobook is amazing. I love the audiobook. The narrator is really good. So here is the description. Oh my gosh, I keep getting stuck on a bookmark. Go check this out and do not let someone talk you into not reading Assassin's Blade. Personally, the first time I read these, I read Assassin's Blade first. Then the second time I read it, I read it with this one. I read them at the same time. Now I'm rereading the series again. I'm going to read it third in the series just to kind of see it's like a test if it makes a difference so far it honestly has not made a difference at all i definitely if it was me would suggest reading it before throne of glass it gives you a little more taste in your mouth a little more history for the characters that kind of come up and that are in this book so that's my suggestion my recommendation there so the very last and og book on this list you may know what i'm gonna say you may not the author has a lot of Mm -mm, out there opinions people don't like her I don't really think of it one way or the other because I think of the series and the characters in the books not the author and so that is Harry Potter Harry Potter this book has been through some shit okay if you can't tell it is so dirty I don't even know what happened to it I don't even know what that is where it came from why it's there uh, but we're, we're gonna chill with it. This was the very original book that I read whenever I was eight years old. Okay, let's look and see what the published date of this is. I'm very curious. This did come out in the UK, I believe, and got famous in the UK before it got famous here. <gasps> oh my god. I was nine years old, guys. I was nine. I was nine years old. That's nuts to me. Anyways, I remember coming home from school. I would keep this in my book bag. It felt so heavy at the time. And I would come home from school. I came home off the bus, stayed at my grandma's till my parents got home from work. And I would read this. And she would yell at me to stop because she wanted me to do my homework. And I just could not put it down. And just every time a new book came out, I would go to Barnes and Noble. I would pre-order it. My parents would pre-order it for me. I would go to Barnes and Noble ha with my best friend, have the midnight release party. It was just the best time. These movies were my childhood. I cried. The last movie came out in theaters the summer after I graduated high school. And I cried in the movie theater. I was like heartbroken because I was like, oh my God, my friends, they're gone. I'm not going to see them anymore. Genuinely broke my heart to not be seeing these characters and, you know, living and reading this story on the big screen or just the books in general anymore. Like it just seriously broke my heart. Like I cannot even describe it. It sounds so dramatic, but that's just how I felt. This is just a good versus evil, good old good versus evil story and good wins. I'm going to spoil it for you there. Good wins. And that's why you want to read it because you want to see the journey that it took for good to win. I am going to cry right now. I'm not even kidding with you how much I love this book. And just the fact that like it's over. Where are you, Harry? I miss you, Harry. <laughs>
<laughs> it's so true though like I just I don't know I know I'm being really dramatic right now but I just can't describe to you how much these stories and these books meant to me they shaped me as a child as my childhood just so amazing my whole entire family loved them when I think of my childhood I literally think of Harry Potter 100% I just implore you again to read this series and you will not regret it it will have your heart regardless of JK Rowling and everything that involves her take that out of the equation it is just the story itself that you should care about so please read harry potter that is the end of my video i hope that this helped you i hope that you have either some new recommendations or ones that you've heard of but now want to read because of my amazing recommendation and descriptions <laughs> that is all for today's video. Please go and check my description. All of my links are down below. I have um, multiple Instagrams. I have another cozy aesthetic bookish vloggy channel for you to check out as well. Videos every Wednesday on there and I'm thinking of potentially bringing back. I had a couple people ask on my giveaway video whether I was going to be bringing back my discord book clubs and I think I might. So if you would be interested in having discord book clubs where we pick a book every month to read together and chat on Discord, let me know. I might bring those back to life. So leave a comment, let me know. And yeah, I just appreciate you guys. I appreciate you being here with me and my journey on YouTube and watching my channel. You are amazing. And I will see you next time. Bye.